Hello everyone, welcome back. If you are new here and you do like these videos, they're helpful for you and the community and all of that, please um, um, subscribe so that you're alerted when I do drop a video and alive and all of that good stuff. And if you guys wouldn't mind doing a thumbs up so that it pushes it out to other people, it would be so much appreciated. Thank you so much. So, you know, honestly, my mood is so up and down. Um, as all of you do know, I do talk about it quite often the last week. But my, my kitty cat um, died. We had him for seven, eight years. And my mood is just so all over the place. And then also let me know if you guys have like an ear pressure or ear pain. If that's like related to the... The benzo, um, it started back when I started benzos. Like it was sort of around the same time. I'm kind of thinking it's really hard to, to go back eight years, but I'm wondering if my, cause I was thinking, is it migraines? Is it allergies? You know, what is it? And something popped up to where it made me think of benzos. I don't remember what it was. So let me know in the comments if you had any ear issues. So like pressure, pain, just ear issues. I'm really curious if you guys did have it after you did the withdrawal. Um, you know, kind of how it worked out. Um, yeah, I, I find myself having like crying spells and I woke up sick. I caught what my son and my husband have, which always irritates the withdrawals. Anything that I'm doing lately that's out of like the norm is irritating my withdrawals. So like if I have to drive far, um, it activates my ears, my headaches, my head pressure, my face pressure. It activates all that, which creates, um, it just aggravates the withdrawals. Like my muscle jerk starts to come back where I'm jerking and um, just some of the withdrawal symptoms. And then having a cold activates the withdrawal symptoms too. But um, yeah, I've been having like crying spells where um, I didn't want like my family to, to hear all of them. I, I just... I don't want to be that person that is constantly like miserable and lately you know I kind of have been and so I went in the closet and just cried and just tried to to get out all of those feelings um and you know my husband came in and I'm like I just need a minute I just don't want to be crying in the room where the kids can hear me and everything you know and there's nothing wrong with them knowing you're sad, but it's just so much right now. Um, it's like at least once or twice a day. Um, it's just like this overall, like really, um, really anxiety, um, like almost on the verge of like panic. because I can't speed up the withdrawal. I can't fix my ears. That's keeping me like from traveling or doing any trips and because it just is too painful and too uncomfortable. Um, and then of course, like I'm grieving um, our animal, which my husband, um, you know, was talking to me because he, he's a veteran and um, he has a papers to get a service animal or emotional animal, which our cat was his emotional animal. Um, you know, when he couldn't sleep because his PTSD, um, he would just sit there and pet Tony and Tony would climb up on his chest or um, just climb up 
in front of his iPad and it was so funny and he would just like have his hand on Tony and just it was comforting so um I mentioned you know some people have told me that it really did help maybe getting another animal not that we're trying to replace him but it's you know we haven't moved his bed or his tree or like we gave away his food and um his treats and stuff like that to um my daughter's friend that has three cats um but we didn't want to give away his like stuff and not that we're trying to replace him because like you can't but maybe just try to get an another friend um a different friend um so he was thinking about it and I think we're gonna go look we're not gonna go look with the intention to buy but I think we're gonna go look and if you know an animal like just jumps out at us and we have to have it then there you go um, I think we might be looking for like one dog one cat um, We'll see how everything goes. Everything is just so up in the air, but. But I, I find myself more anxious now than through the first two months of the withdrawal. And I feel myself thinking, Like, can I live with this the rest of my life? If my ears never resolve, like, can I live with this the rest of my life? And I, I don't know what that is exactly, but I just, I'm, my thoughts are just all over the place. And then I go back to like, if I didn't do surrogacy, I would never be in this place. I would never have had to take benzos or antidepressants or anything I would have never had to take anything and I know that doesn't help like doing the what if what it could have should have it doesn't help at all but I just am struggling so much I'll have like a couple good days and then I feel like I'm back in the dumps <laughs> um and I know that like it's amazing that I've had good days like that's really awesome but I think once you've had a couple good days and then you're back in the dumps it just feels so bad um yeah I just I try not to cry because it leaves my face puffy and it leaves me just feeling crummy like crummy or my head hurts you know when you cry you just it doesn't feel good the next day but I'm just so I'm just so sad you know I am back and forth with work um, and you know when I can do that but like life is just so hard it is um, everything is so expensive you know food to live you die without it so why is it so expensive how can something that you would die without be so expensive or so many people can't get it or water? You know, purifiers are so expensive, water bottles. And I'm just going to vent right now because, you know, it really, really ticked me off when I went to get medicine for my husband and my son being sick and NyQuil was 17 bucks. Robitussin was 16 bucks. You know, food for a family of four is... 600 700 bucks 
car insurance keeps going up. You have to have it to drive. You have to have it. I went to do allergy and what a, a allergy and food testing because I'm sick. And that was another thing I was going to try. But it's $1,200 to do both for a 15 minute test. A 15 minute test is $1,200. We had insurance. We have insurance. It's doesn't cover anything until you reach your $3,000 deductible. Which you're paying on, you know, $200 a month you're paying on this insurance, but they won't cover anything until you hit two, uh, $3,000 per person. So I was like, just cancel it. We're not gonna hit $3,000 in a year unless you have like a major event. So cancel it, we'll save that 200 a month and we'll use that 200 a month that goes towards insurance to go towards like actual treatment. And so yeah, seeing a doctor is extremely difficult. Getting medicine is extremely insane. Food is off the rails. Um. And I think that I'm just, things that I could deal with before the withdrawal, I think I've just had enough. I've, I've just had enough. Um, and you know, if, if I'm not being political, so if somebody wants to, you know, drop like a comment talking like politics and stuff, like I'm not being political. I'm talking about like medicine is $16, $17. Food is, you know, I'm not talking politics. So if you drop like a, a political comment, I will delete it. Um, Cause I'm not talking that I'm talking about just everyday stuff, um, everyday life and things that are really tough. So, I just don't want to be so sad anymore. Um, I canceled my dermatology appointment today because I woke up sick. And, you know, I just feel the weight of my the world on my shoulders. And my husband's taken so much off my plate. So much. But the little stuff that I have to do... <laughs> still feels so overwhelming right now. You know, ever since, for the past, I'm gonna say like four days, sleeping has not been great. It's kinda not reverted back, but kinda backslid a little bit. I just wanna scream. Life is kind of just going and I feel stuck. Uh, like I, I've, you know, it's crazy cause like I've always been like sick. Um, when I was 14, I was diagnosed with hydrogenitis separativa, which is an extremely, extremely, extremely painful condition. Um, it's where you have like bacteria that builds up. It's like an auto inflammatory disease. And it's like bacteria builds up and when it can't go anywhere, it goes up through your skin. So, you know, some people have it in their groin area, under their breasts, uh, armpits, head, stuff like that. And, you know, they're kind of like, they're extremely painful. And um, I live with that all the way up. I live, it's incurable, but I had it. I even had surgery on it once. And I've always been embarrassed by it. My whole life, I was so embarrassed by it. But it's just life. You know, we all have things that happen to us that we can't control. 
And so, as where I still am extremely embarrassed by it, uh, I still am extremely embarrassed, but it's pretty much in remission now because I started um, a trial drug and it worked, it's working wonders. But it made me extremely sick in high school. I got diagnosed at 14. It was like dormant. It's dormant. And then when you hit puberty, it, it kind of acts. And then the older you get it, it increases. And I'm talking extremely painful. Like I can't, if I have it bad, I can't move. It's just intense. And um, in high school, I couldn't go to school. I was extremely sick. And then if you think you have a constant um, bacteria going through your body, so the doctors want to put you on antibiotics for the rest of your life. And it's just like a constant sickness. And for the past year and a half, two years, I've been on this drug and it's worked wonders. And then now I have this ear stuff and I can't travel with it because my ears won't equalize. And I just feel like, damn. Why can't I catch a break? <laughs> and then like my HS, um, even though it's under control, I get sick so easy. I've been sick three times in the past four months. I get sick so easy because I still have the bacteria in my body. Uh, and I just knew I had to cut the benzos out and I had to do this withdrawal because I didn't know if that medicine was making things worse. I just didn't know if that was contributing to just how much my body was deteriorating. Um, I did say I would share the good, the bad, and the ugly, and that's what I'm doing. I'm sharing everything that is with me. And I know everybody doesn't have the same issues or problems. or But uh, it is extremely difficult right now. <laughs> Emotionally, I'm just having a hard time dealing with anything. Like anything. All right, guys, I'll leave it there. I'm going to take a bath and just, just, just try to breathe. Yeah, just, just try to breathe today. And if you, and if you're going through um, withdrawals from any type of medication, I'm there with you and we're all, everybody on this channel, this community is there with you. So if you want to leave a comment, we'd absolutely love to have you here and um, join this community. And I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.